Good morning, everyone. Hope everyone had a good uh, candidate. So we'll get right into uh, it's ten o'clock. So we'll get right into our agenda uh, this morning. We have a we'll have a presentation from uh, the illustrious uh, Doug Thompson in in a short while, which I know people at this committee have likely missed Doug Thompson. So we have this annual policy to bring him back, and this is this is the first this is the first excuse to bring him back. So it's good. So on the uh, so declarations of interest for the meeting of Thursday, July second. 2015. Seeing none. Uh, confirmation of minutes for the meeting of June 5th, 2015. Okay. All right, before we get to the agenda, I just have to read this in my statutory statement. This is a public meeting to consider the proposed zoning and bylaw amendments listed as items 3 to 8 on today's agenda. For the items listed above, only those who make oral submissions today or written submissions before the amendments are adopted may appeal the matter to the Ontario Municipal Board. In addition, the applicant may appeal the matter to the Ontario Municipal Board if Council does not adopt an amendment within 120 days of receipt of the application for zoning and 180 days for an official plan amendment. A comment sheet is available at the door for anyone wishing to submit written comments on these amendments. And Haley is back there to help you if you would like to uh, fill out one of those forms. That's not as a part of the statutory thing. I just added that in. So uh, the first item on the agenda is the presentation um, from, from former Councillor Thompson on uh, the 2015 International Pie Match and Rural Expo. We'll have them up here in a couple seconds. Um, item number two, a commemorative naming for Doug Rivington Park in West Carleton, March. That the uh, Commercial Rural Affairs Committee recommend Council approve the proposal to name a new park at 701 Meadow Ridge Circle, Doug Rivington Park. On the item? Yeah, Carried. Thank you. Item number three, uh, zoning bylaw amendment for 4845 Bank Streets. The, the Agriculture Rural Affairs Committee recommend Council approve an amendment to zoning bylaw 2008-250 for 4845 Bank Street to permit co rural commercial uses as detailed in document two. Now we have a speaker on that item, uh, Stephanie Morris from Holtzman, if I understand that you're speaking on behalf of the, uh, the applicant and you're in favor. All right, so on the, we, um, there's no one else to speak on it. So on the item, yeah. carried. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Item number four is a zoning bylaw amendment for part of 1121 Stagecoach Road and part of 1000 Vista Barrett Private. Um, Agriculture Real Affairs Committee recommend Council approve an amendment to zoning bylaw 2008 250 for part of 1121 Stagecoach and part of 1000 Vista Barrett Private for the purpose of making connection corrections and minor inclusions to zoning bylaw 2008 250 for phase two of Albion Woods Lifestyle Community as detailed in document two. And again, on this item, I understand uh, Sheldon Dattenberger from Parsons is here to speak on behalf of Park Ridge, Park Ridge communities and uh, in favor. So, um, Sheldon, so if we, I don't think there's any issues here. So if we carry this item, you're okay? Perfect, perfect, thanks. So on that, on that item, carried. Thank you very much. <clears throat> item number five is an official plan amendment for 5341 Boundary Road uh, involving the Carlsbad Springs trickle feed system. We're actually going to just get a, a presentation on that item, so I'll hold that item. Item number six is a zoning bylaw amendment for 1848 Upper Dwyer Hill Road uh, that the Agriculture Rural Affairs Committee recommend Council approve an amendment to the zoning bylaw 2008-250 for part of 1848 Upper Dwyer Hill Road to permit to prohibit residential uses on the retained farmland as detailed in document two. So this is just a uh, surplus farm severance. Uh, so on that item, carried. Item number seven is a zoning bylaw amendment for 1175 Mantic Station Road and 6247 Pebblewoods Drive in the Emerald Links uh, community uh, that the Agricultural Rural Affairs Committee recommend Council approve an amendment to zoning bylaw 2008-250 for 1175 Manchester Station Road and 6247 Pebble Woods Drive to facilitate the development of an approved draft plan of subdivision as detailed in document two. Um, so again, on, on the item, we have one speaker, uh, Janet Bradley, who's here to speak on behalf of um, the property owner, Mr. Gibb Patterson. So I understand that um, as if we're willing to carry this, I think you're okay to, to, to not speak. All right. Yes, that's right. We do have a technical amendment as well, which uh, I will ask... Um, Councillor DeRoos to introduce right now. Thank you, Chair. Uh, 
that the following text under the heading summary of requested zoning bylaw amendment proposal, the applicant wishes to rezone the land to rural residential subzone 4, exception 512R, RR4, bracket 512, as shown on the document 1 as area A, be replaced with the text, the applicant wishes to rezone the land to rural residential subzone 4, exception X, XXR, bracket RR4, XXXR, as shown on document 1 as area 1. Two, that the location map in document 1 be replaced with the attached map to this motion. Three, that document 2 details of recommended zoning be replaced with the following. The proposed change to the city of Ottawa zoning bylaw number 2008-250 for 1175 Manatec Station Road and 6247 Pepplewood Drive are as follow. A, rezone the land shown in document one as follow. One area A from RU to RR4 XXX. Second area B from RU to O1 and three area C from 01A to RR4 512R. B, add a new uh, exception XXR to section 240 rural exception with provisions similar in effect to the following minimum lot with 28 meter second minimum lot area 8,000 meter square and three minimum interior side yard setback of 2 meter one side and 3.5 meter on the other side and there is more and for that no further notice be provided pursuant to Section 3417 of the Planning Act. It's done. All right, thank you very much. Uh, so on the, on the amendments, yeah. carried. And on the item, yeah. carried as amended. Right. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, Skip. Item number eight is a zoning bylaw amendment for part of 2864 Diamond View Road. This too is a, uh, a surplus farm uh, severance. So the Agriculture Rural Affairs Committee recommend council approve an amendment to zoning bylaw 2008-250 for part of 2864 Diamond View Road to prohibit residential uses on the retained farmland as detailed in document two. On the item? Okay, perfect. Right, and uh, we have some. We have a question on item nine, so I'll hold item nine, and we'll go back to the first item in the agenda, which is a presentation on the international pie match, which is to be held in Finch, Ontario. I hope we're going to have a South Nation meeting on the same day, so that we maximize the quality. So, Mr. Thompson, I. Uh, uh, thank you much, very much, Mr. Chair, members of ARAC and city staff. Uh, I'm uh, very pleased uh, to be here today to give an update on the International Plowing Match and Rural Expo to be held this September in Finch. I uh, want to uh, thank uh, Chair Scott Moffat for arranging the presentation. Uh, it was done within half an hour of sending him an email on the weekend, and I want to thank uh, Mark uh, Desjardins for coordinating me being here today. I want to, first of all, bring greetings from the IPM Chair Jim Brunel and the executive team. Uh, there are nine committees uh, on the team and 45 subcommittees, and uh, it's an honor for me to chair the Public Relations Committee of the uh, 20, 2015 International Flying Match and Rural Expo uh, to be held September 22nd to 26th and we're expecting between 85 and 95,000 people to attend the site located approximately five kilometers north of uh, Finch. Uh, my role as chair of the Public Relations Committee is twofold. Uh, first, I visit clubs, associations and other organizations to update them on the event and as well to seek volunteers for the match. Uh, just last month, I spoke to the Stittsville Lions Club, and they're sending a team to work the gates on one of the days at the site. 
And uh, secondly, my committee and I are responsible for the media relations at the 2015 match. And today I want to present a visual outline of this huge event and then uh, if there are any questions, be willing to take them. So I, I have a, a fine assistant who is assisting me today. Thank you very much. All right, so I, we'll move ahead. Uh, the International uh, uh, Plowing Management Rural Expo's largest show of its kind in North America uh, covers approximately 1,000 acres. Uh, the first match was held in 1913, and uh, it's been held every year since. It's always in Ontario, with the exception of 1918 and 1942 to 45. Now, they said in uh, 2013 it was the 100th anniversary, but it must be new math because there were uh, uh, four years that they didn't hold it. But uh, anyway, it's uh, uh, we're very excited to... Uh, uh, in, uh, in Eastern Ontario to have the plowing match back uh, to our area. Uh, the uh, storm on Dan Das and Glengarry, and I know I'm a little out of, uh, out of the area now, we're in the city of Ottawa, but the uh, storm on Dan Das and Glengarry has hosted the match twice before, uh, 1936 and 1958. Uh, Prescott Russell, it was uh, Chuta Blondeau a couple of years ago, and uh, it uh, was hosted by uh, in Navin uh, just a short time ago as well. Uh, the, uh, the match uh, has attracted uh, uh, millions of uh, competitors, exhibit exhibitors and visitors from across Canada, the United States and Europe. Uh, each uh, match is organized by local board of directors, numerous committees, and well over a thousand volunteers. I think right now we have about 1,200 volunteers uh, enlisted. Uh, we're still looking for more. Uh, and if you go on the website, there is uh, you can fill out a form to volunteer, uh, and I, I think you get a lot of enjoyment out of that. It's, it is a lot of fun. And I, when I look up at the Members of ARAC, I know you all plow at the local plowing match. Some of you have done better than others. Uh, <clears throat> I won it once too, Eli. Uh, Councilor, <laughs> okay. I know. I think he has. I think he has a special connection with the judges. Uh, every uh, this uh, year, uh, as in others, there is a legacy fund that benefits. Uh, an organization or organizations within the area and this year the uh, International Plowing Match Legacy Fund uh, any profits will go to uh, the Winchester uh, the Cornell community Winchester and District Memorial Hospital and the Glengarry Memorial Hospital so we're if we have good weather and good crowds uh, we expect uh, that uh, we will be able to uh, donate money to these three hospitals that are within uh, SD and G. It's interesting to note that Winchester serves a good portion of Osgood Ward, uh, and so uh, that will uh, be a bit of an incentive for people from our area to uh, travel to the plowing match. Uh, I, I'm really uh, sorry to say, but well, I have a few pictures here, but unfortunately I'm not in any one of them. Uh, the uh, committee has been very active uh, getting the message out to, about the International Plowing Match, and this are, these are some of the events that they have been involved with. Uh, Jim Brunell is, I think he's right in the center over international in, this, uh, uh, in the top uh, picture and then he's waving in the bottom picture in front and center. But he's done a lot of work. Uh, it's, it's a huge job uh, chairing a, a match of this size. Uh, burnt orange is our signature color. Uh, I guess probably if you look at the federal uh, parties, maybe it wasn't a bad choice to <laughs> choose orange. <laughs> It'll be interesting when the, on the opening day because we expect the Governor General, the Prime Minister, and the leaders of the federal opposition parties to be there, so I would expect that we'll see a lot of orange. 
Uh, there is a souvenir uh, team. There is in the village of Finch. They have a, a shop where you can buy uh, paraphernalia for the uh, plowing match. They're open five days a week. There, there are three. This is just to give you an idea of the volunteer enthusiasm. There are three people who, uh, I, I think it's nine to five. They're open every day of the week. And uh, next month they're going to start opening up on the weekend. I was in there last week, and the, the, the business is starting to pick up. People are coming in now to pick up uh, signs and shirts and other hats and other things uh, for the plowing match. The beautification uh, contest, uh, I think uh, the rural Ottawa is sort of out of the area, but I don't think it would hurt to purchase a lawn sign uh, to promote it. Uh, the local plowing committees are a big part of that, and I know I, I don't know if uh, Gib Patterson is still here, but he's a big part of uh, plowing in uh, in the rural areas of Ottawa, and uh, so we ch we're trying to get the message out. So if you want our interest in purchasing a lawn sign, you can go online and get that uh, get that uh, uh, those things that you might want to put up if you want to decorate your property. Uh, we, we can sign you up. Uh, we have uh, two mascots. Um, neither one of them are myself, uh, but they have visited uh, various uh, trade shows in the area. And uh, Finch, it's really interesting. Finch is a population of about 800 people. Uh, the road work that's going on there is just incredible. All the paving that's going on. Uh, it, it, it puts the city to shame right now. <laughs> but they're preparing. Uh, all roads will lead to Finch in September. Uh, just some uh, important facts. I know rural Ottawa has significant agricultural community. The buying power of IPM is, is uh, quite significant. Uh, uh, farm tractor, farm machinery, uh, annual sales in the area of $68 million. And uh, in 2012, the buying power of the visitors exceeded $160 million. So it's a huge benefit to, obviously, to Stormont, Dundas, and Glengarry, but I think it reaches far beyond that. Uh, and, and that's why I wanted to come here today to, to uh, uh, speak before the uh, committee and staff and, and visitors here. Uh, because it is important, and hopefully uh, the uh, councillors will, uh, as we get closer to September, will put this information in their uh, community newsletters because uh, we need all help we can get. Uh, some other important uh, facts about the impact of, uh, of the plowing match. Uh, the, the one that really interests me is the bottom one. Well, the, the bottom two. Uh, the 20 million positive economic impact by tourists and event uh, operations. Right now, all the hotels in Cornwall are pretty well booked out. People are coming to Ottawa to, uh, are, I understand, booking hotels here to attend. Uh, it's not that far, but a 40 minute drive from the rural parts of Ottawa. But the last one, 61% of visitors traveled more than 40 kilometers to the event. So Ottawa, uh, and, and we're targeting Quebec uh, and uh, northern uh, uh, New York State and the city of Ottawa uh, to entice people to come out to the event. This uh, Yesterday I was in the uh, Osgood Village Candy Parade IPM float, and a lot of people, we handed out flyers, a lot of people were didn't know about it, but hopefully they will now and hope uh, that many of them can attend. Uh, this, I think, we it's just uh, common knowledge that uh, we need, or the, the IPM needs a lot of sponsors, uh, uh, home hardware, uh, BMO are big sponsors of, of most uh, rural plowing matches and, and the IPM. And it's, it's a good market for them because the statistics show that 69% of visitors recall the name of uh, at least one of the sponsors. Uh, the Chute Blondeau, which is uh, not too far from uh, 
the site of uh, this year's plowing match. Uh, they attracted 72,000 visitors. We're hoping if the weather holds out to uh, to get close to 90,000, they generated uh, $225,000 that were donated back to local uh, charities. Uh, one of the things that we're really focusing on, and we're out visiting schools, uh, uh, the 2012 in Waterloo, they had 17,000 students, uh, their attendance 78,000, revenue o uh, over half a million, uh, total revenue is 1.8 million, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, the volunteer uh, time is, is just incredible, and it, it's great to see uh, when we have our uh, meetings of uh, all chairs meetings there's probably 150 to 200 people out volunteers come out for those meetings to get an update on what's happening uh, maybe you don't want to see this but uh, the, the major benefits will obviously are accrued by uh, the city of uh, Cornwall on Monday I'm meeting with the uh, the mayor of Cornwall and his uh, uh, CAO to talk about uh, some of the things that we can do to promote it in Cornwall and the area but uh, it uh, as I said earlier I think that the uh, the benefits spread far beyond just Cornwall and uh, the gas stations local stores along the way from Ottawa to uh, Finch will benefit from that Uh, location is very important. Uh, the uh, there, I, I think there are four or five farmers who who combine their their uh, properties, uh, and you need over a thousand acres of flat, well-drained land, and uh, we 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 obviously meet all those conditions at the uh, 2015 site. Hydro, I think many of you know, but Hydro uh, are starting next month. They come in and build the, uh, it's just like a small village, but they, uh, they, their apprentices uh, are on site, and this is where they train to install the uh, power, uh, the, the power uh, lines and grid for the, uh, for the hookups. And just some information about the setup, uh, the shipping containers start arriving. As a matter of fact, some of them have already started, uh, and this is location uh, uh, in Finch. It is, it's fairly centrally located. It's close to, uh, it's within an hour's drive of uh, the American border, uh, an hour drive to Montreal, close to 417 and 401. Uh, so it, it, it is a good location, uh, we believe, obviously. Uh, the way it's set up, the Ontario Plowmen's Association basically organizes, they're, they're the controlling organization, and the uh, local committee uh, takes some marching orders from the uh, OPA. Uh, the Tented City, uh, we're, we still have some room for vendors. Uh, this uh, we anticipate we're, we're trying to reach 700 uh, but uh, we have a little way to go but uh, things start coming at the last minute so we hope to have a good turnout uh, at, at the site uh, and just some things uh, that's not my tractor but I think that's in the, I think that's in the village of Finch uh, big quilting uh, committee, uh, they've already, uh, I think they're sold out with their blocks and, uh, at this time. Uh, and uh, just this, just some, uh, if you want, if you're interested in quilting, I know Councillor Blay is, uh, August 14th and 15th at the Finch Arena, uh, uh, you're welcome to come. To that event and I think most of uh, the committee has been involved with the local plowing matches uh, they will have some uh, different types of uh, uh, horse horse plowing and uh, modern equipment 
they have they have all of the uh, all the musical groups are local. Every one of them from uh, the uh, Finch, Cornwall, SDNG area. So there was they 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 had uh, inquiries from some high priced. Uh, entertainment but uh, they wanted to stay local and they were able to fill up uh, all of the uh, all of the events with local talent uh, and then this is just another group a uh, picture of the uh, of many of the volunteers I, I, I'm hoping to get my picture in the next uh, slide deck <laughs> Uh, really interesting, um, this uh, lady will be the parade marshal, uh, and uh, she's the one who stitched the first red maple leaf, uh, and so we're very excited to have her as part of that. Uh, we expect, as I said earlier, that we'll have uh, the uh, uh, federal uh, leaders, provincial leaders, and it's really interesting. I'm. I'm in charge of the media day uh, of the media group, and uh, so they, we're, we're trying to work with uh, some of the uh, federal leaders. But it's a little difficult to keep in or get in contact with their media people. But we're we're very pleased that uh, uh, and uh, uh, my MP Pierre Polyev was able to help us uh, get uh, this lady uh, coordinate get this lady to lead the parade. Queen of the Furl, this is uh, a, an exciting time. Uh, we had a group, uh, the, the, there was a uh, convention, OPA convention in Cornwall uh, a couple months ago, and all the uh, Queens of the Furls were there, and uh, it's, it's a big event for them uh, all from our, all across Ontario, and they're very excited about uh, that, uh, that program. And there's just some things that will happen at the event. And the Queen of the Fur, uh, Fabian Kagi is uh, she's the Queen of the Fur for Stormont, but she is she's an incredible young lady. She's been helping me out uh, organizing a lot of the trade shows and booths, uh, and uh, just a remarkable young lady. We have a Queen of the Furrow from Osgood, uh, Kelsey uh, Payne, uh, who will be attending and participating in all events. Uh, and these are just some of the slides of things, and most of you have been to, I think all of you probably been to international power matches, but it, it's really a, a great uh, event for the whole community to, uh, to attend. And, like a big family picnic and just some other things that we can I think we can use uh, and you've seen these uh, the RV park we're just about totally booked up when I when I first volunteered they put <laughs> they put me on the RV park committee uh, I didn't last long there. <laughs> I guess they found I was better suited to this job. But uh, anyway, we've uh, we're very excited about that because uh, uh, it does it does help a lot of people. Uh, United counties have committed a hundred thousand dollars to start us up, and uh, we're uh, very pleased uh, with uh, with their support. And this. Uh, this is really interesting because uh, we had a local uh, group put this together, and the ta it shows the uh, present and past uh, farming community. And the top one, original one, uh, we had uh, the elder, st elder statesman of the farming community had a straw hat and uh, braces on, and we sent this to the OPA for their approval, and they sent back and said no because it looked too much like a Mennonite uh, person, so we had to, we had to change uh, that. But we're very pleased with that, and we got a lot of compliments about this, uh, the, uh, uh, the signage that we have. And just uh, uh, 
the Stormont uh, Township of North Stormont, that's where it's located. They've been big supporters, as I said, SD&G and the Ontario Plowman Association. And uh, here are many of the sponsors. The one that really is exciting is uh, Delaney Bus Lines. They have, they've taken one of their coach buses and they've wrapped it and it travels. Uh, they they have a commuter run uh, into the city of Ottawa, and so it, it's it's great advertisement uh, uh, for the match. And there it is. And uh, there is uh, to raise money. There is a uh, raffle, or you can buy tickets for a trip to Barbados. We're well connected, I believe. Though I'm not, I not the best <laughs> Facebook and Twitter, but we are well connected and have a good, great website. And this is just some information about uh, our area, and I think we're close to. Uh, so if there's anyone in the community, I know that there are some business people here, I think they're still here, if they're interested in getting their wares uh, posted, we still have room for uh, new uh, partnership packages. And again, volunteers are very important. And that's, that's the show. So I don't know if there are any questions. Yeah. Anyway, thanks very much for the opportunity. Thank you, uh, Chair Scott. I appreciate uh, uh, the opportunity to be here. And uh, Thank you very much, Doug. Is that you hear me? All right. Appreciate uh, you taking the time to come out and inform us of that. I know I, I think I went to the international plowing match when it was in at uh, at uh, Garner Rouse Farm in Richmond. I think I was about two years old. Fond memories. 1983. What's that? Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank. Well, thanks for coming. Thank you for for providing that. Thank Well, see, he, he wasn't in most of those pictures because it was 2014 and he was still busy being a counselor. So his focus was on, was on the people of Osgood Ward. <clears throat> all right, thank you very much. That's better. Um, all right, so we're going to go on to item number five. Well, on, the, on the presentation, is it received? Received. received. Thanks. So item number five is the official plan amendment for 5341 Boundary Road, and we're just going to get a, a, a brief presentation on on the item. <coughs> Essentially, it's uh, it's with reference to the Carlsbad trickle feed system and extending it uh, to the rural industrial lands uh, south of Highway 17 near Boundary Road. We have two, uh, two kids in the back there. Welcome to the Agricultural Affairs Committee. I can assure you it's usually much more scintillating.
are completely ignoring me, which is what my kids do quite often as well. That's the French one. That's the French one. There's the one above it. Okay. Sounds good. All right, so we have uh, Jeff Ostrichuk to give a presentation on this item. Good morning, Mr. Chair and members of committee. This application examines the appropriateness of an amendment to the official plan for lands located south of the village of Carlsbad Springs. The purpose of this amendment is to add policy to the official plan to permit an extension to the Carlsbad Springs public service area. In June of 2014, the city received an application to amend the official plan by the Boundary Road Industrial Landowners. The request to extend the public service area was to address water supply concerns and potential economic development. In the late 90s, the former regional municipality of Ottawa Carlton Ministry of Environment provided municipal water to Carlsbad Springs area to address issues with the water supply. Known as the trickle system, water is supplied through a network of small diameter pipes. The water trickles in at a fixed rate to a storage tank, which is typically located in the basement. From there, a pump supplies the unit's water fixtures. This system now serves a catchment of over 900 units. Since the day one of this water system, former official plans and now the city's, City of Ottawa official plan do not per permit new development or extensions to this system. Recently, though, Council approved an amendment, Official Plan Amendment 152, to permit severances along the existing public service line. This next slide identifies the current layout of the public service area in solid red. The, the dashed line to the south identifies the proposed extension. Since 1997, the Carlsbad Springs service area has been monitored for usage and performance. With an assumed design peak of 100% concurrent use, the original total units permitted was 829. Years of monitoring have confirmed that the concurrent use is much less than what was originally assumed and therefore identifying more capacity to accommodate more users. Of note, this newfound capacity was one of the technical permissions required to allow OPA 152 to be approved. The official plan amendment before you today also requests a portion of this capacity be used for lands along Boundary Road. This next slide is an enlargement of the area proposed for expansion. The existing water service line in yellow dead ends on Boundary Road north of 417 and Thunder Road, um, uh, west of Boundary Road. The extension of the water system identified in red will join the two dead ends and provide a water service to provide properties along Boundary, south as far as to, uh, or south to Entrepreneur. Of note, the connection of these dead ends is important as it mitigates the impact of extending the system by reducing the need for flushing the system to maintain water quality. A limited amount of development exists along Boundary Road. There is also a large percentage of vacant land. These lands are zoned for industrial and commercial uses. This slide highlights the, the location of some of these uses. The city's official plan supports the servicing of rural lands only where there exists a health concern, is part of an expansion of a service village, or supports a unique economic activity. Public service area, this public service area has the capacity to accommodate an extension. Mr. Chair, staff is of the opinion that there is an approved policy basis that supports the applicant's proposal. Such an extension of the PSA makes efficient use of the water service. The extension of the public service area has its advantages. 
Servicing the industrial lands along Boundary Road with this underutilized water system will help stimulate economic growth and allow for existing industrial lands to become more attractive. More importantly, however, it is also providing a source of good drinking water to those uses that currently exist along Boundary Road. Looking to the future of Carlsbad area, this extension will create additional employment for the rural area, facilitate interchange development opportunities, and help with the employment in the local area for people who wish to live and work in their community. The technical studies and rationale provided by the applicant in support of the expansion have been reviewed and accepted by city staff. The proposed extension will provide for 22 connections to existing lots along Boundary Road. It will also provide potential for a limited amount of future plans of subdivision and the creation of new lots for non-residential purposes. The extension of the system will be funded by the landowners who wish to participate. A landowner's agreement will govern the sharing of the infrastructure costs. Mr. Chair, staff is recommending that this official plan amendment be approved. That, uh, that ends my presentation. To help me today with uh, any questions, uh, to my right, I have Jeff McEwen, Program Manager, Rural Services, and from Environmental Services, uh, Program Manager, Chris Rogers. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Oskachuk. Just before we get into any uh, comments or questions from uh, from councillors, sure we just have a speaker on it, and I'll invite uh, Tim Chatter up uh, to speak on the item. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no worries. Okay. So, if we have any questions, then directly for uh, for the applicant, for one of the um, one of the um, not the applicants, but one of the people that benefit, then uh, Tim's here to to answer those. So, um, I believe Councillor Blay had a had a comment or a question that he wanted to uh, direct. Very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, I think this is uh, an important, uh, an important application to uh, move forward with. As the presentation noted, it will offer economic development opportunities in Carlsbad Springs. We are trying to encourage rural, uh, rural jobs, particularly at our highway interchanges, and this will uh, go a long way to helping uh, do that. I do have a question to staff. Uh, I'm not sure if it's most appropriate to legal or the planning department. Um, I'd like to provide or have committee provide direction that either at uh, the zoning stage or at the site plan stage, whichever best appropriate, uh, that applications be required to uh, have grey water uh, systems to supplement the, the water um, uh, connection to Carlsbad Springs so that we're not putting fresh water into toilets and, and things like that and we can focus on the drinking water. Is, uh, is that appropriate or when, uh, I guess I'm looking to legal for? The direction to staff is appropriate, um, Mr. Chair. However, I would ask staff to comment on uh, such a direction from a planning or a infrastructure perspective. It's a reasonable proposal. There's no technical reason why we couldn't pursue that avenue. Still on. Excellent. Well, thank you very much. So, Mr. McHugh and Mr. Brown, you'll take that back uh, to the planning staff for uh, future applications. Yes. Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, with that, Mr. Chair, I have no further uh, questions or comments. Okay, thank you, Councillor Blay. Um, Councillor Austin Thierry? Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, to Mr. McEwen, uh, we have, uh, and, and I, I will support this definitely, since we are really as a city, we're, we're encouraged to hear uh, we are willing to support initiative for economic development. And comes to my mind uh, the, the car corridor, which is really uh, has a water study, and also near the highway, uh, we have. Uh, we have a quite a bit of businesses there. They are waiting to see if the policy will ever be changed from 
uh, the MOE where you can have water but you cannot have sewer. Do we have any update from the ministry? Uh, is there any changes in policy? Like, we can have a similar situation in CARB today, what, what you've seen today here for Carlsbad Spring. So I want to know, are we looking for just case by case or are we looking for a general policy review? Um, I, Mr. Chair, through you, I, I believe that the planning um, policy branch is looking at the interchanges and how whether they to be, are to be serviced. This uh, application has come in prior to that study being complete. Um, that's, um, but I, I believe so. It has been a one-off. This is a one-off on that. Um, but the, I mean, if you're talking about the policy regarding um, split servicing and 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 mm -hmm. that being not the preferred option the policy is still there but we, we recognize in this case that there is uh, special circumstances that would warrant our our uh, concurrence with it well my, my question with all a we, we need to encourage that we need to encourage you know economic development in the rural area and the only way you're going to be able to achieve that by allowing or by bringing the service to, the, to those areas and I know we focus sometimes on certain, you know, but CARP Corridor has been on the books since, since 2003 and looking for that opportunity. So I, I like to see staff, when they are looking at this policy as in general, see if there's any recommend, because we, we're hearing time and time again from the business community, they're willing to pay for the service. The city in shortfall selling water by 10, 12 million a year, so I don't see why we don't encourage it. If, if, if the ministry is willing to do the split services. So I'm, I'm just looking for, do you need a direction to, to, to tell us if, if there's the split is going to be acceptable now? Or, or are, I'm, I'm just in your head, what would you recommend how we can get an opinion in, uh, with today's date, not 12 years ago? Um. I believe um, that, as Jeff mentioned, this, this particular application is a um, one-off. I mean, okay. it does come before the um, 400 series interchange um, review, um, so it's something we have to deal with today. I guess easily this could have been deferred until that time, but there are special circumstances with this one. We have water, more importantly, we have a water quality issue here, and being somewhat of a unique system is a trickle system. There's some opportunity to use some of the capacity to remedy this problem. I think CARP may be a bit of a little, a bit of a different situation, um, and it's probably something we could um, take back to um, the uh, planner who's currently looking at the 400 series highway interchange to see if they can look at CARP in that particular instance as a single service and or combined service. Okay, I would like to follow up with you on this one. So thank you, Mr. Chair, and I am in full support of this uh, item. Thank you. Right, thank you very much, Councillor Alshantiri. Um, is there any other questions or comments on this item? No? See none. Is it item 5 uh, carried? Carried. Carried. Thank you. So the only other item that we have that was held was item number 9, which was a Councillor's item. And the item is a, um, it's a two-year program to offset costs for private. Oh, sorry. Oh. Oh, the open mic. Oh, you, sorry, you want to speak at the open mic on the fluoridation? You want to speak on fluoridation on the open mic. No. What do you think? Sorry, Mr. Chair, but the item was carried. Was the, the, the speaker registered to speak before? Yeah, we had, sorry, we had you to register to speak in the open mic session, which is outside of the agenda. Um, that's, what, that's what the communication I had had, that you were going to speak at the open mic session at the end of the committee, uh, not to a specific item. Okay. So, 
just carry the items. Yeah, we just carry the items, so it kind of adds some confusion. But just he can speak at the open mic. Yeah. All right, Mr. Manning, sorry. So So, Mr. Manning, just um, apologies for the for the confusion. So, with with respect to sorry, not this. Is, so, we are going to have you speak as part of the open mic. You can still speak to the to the item specifically, and then because it has already carried, we can't necessarily just go and reconsider it um, just because we missed it. I did I did offer um, I did uh, mention that there there were there was one speaker on the item that was Mr. Chatter. Um, nobody spoke up at that time, so it's unfortunate that you didn't speak up at that time. But you, you will still get a chance to speak as part of the open mic. And any comments that you have. Uh, we can make sure that we, we take them and this still, item still goes to council. Um, so we can have that opportunity to, to uh, be able to respond and address those concerns after you speak at that time. So I, there isn't an opportunity to speak at this moment. I have to get on to the next item, which is item number nine, and I will come back to you and you can have any questions. Any, you can speak uh, in, uh, after we're done with item number nine. Respect, the mic's not on. And I, and I'm, but, And fortunately, unfortunately, your, your request to speak to this item was not conveyed clearly to me. We've already carried the item. We need to move on to the next item on the agenda, and I will come back to you in the open mic session. Yes. Yeah, so you can, again, you can say all these things at the open mic session. It won't diminish your ability to speak or the things that you're speaking of. Sorry, I, I, I don't want to go back and forth. I want to get on to the next item, and then I'll come back to you at the open mic session. I understand that, but I, I'm not going to change that right now. I mean, you can keep on going back and forth with me right now, but I'm not going to change my mind. We're going to go on to the next item, which is item number nine, and then you can speak at the open mic session. Sorry, I'm, I'm going to cut you off. Okay, so on item number uh, nine, which is a uh, item from Councillor Drews, uh, it's a two-year program to offset costs for private septic systems which require inspection due to source water protection plans. Um, I'll just read the motion really quick. So the motion itself, this was a notice of motion given at the last council meeting, at the last committee meeting, sorry. 
Um, that Agricultural Rural Affairs Committee recommend council direct staff to work with the Ottawa Septic System Office to develop a two-year program to offset costs for private septic systems which require inspection as a result of the source water protection plan and uh, to approve that a budget be established for this program not to exceed $50,000 per year and operate with an existing budget envelope from the Rural Affairs Office and three, approve any further extension uh, approve that any further extension of the program beyond initial two years requires subsequent council approval. Um, I know we have a couple questions. I just wanted to this stems from work uh, done by the three local conservation authorities um, on source water protection plans. And I know that in the Rideau watershed, which is I have to sit on the Rideau Conservation Authority, um, we have about 15 municipalities. Unfortunately, 14 municipalities receive funding. Through the provincial, uh, through the provincial government, through um, uh, to to carry out these inspection uh, inspections for private sector systems. Unfortunately, the city of Ottawa was not eligible for such uh, for such funding. Um, but the the requirement to to in, to inspect some of these separate systems within a certain area of a communal well system is is required under the source water protection plan. Um, so that's that's what brought us here. That's what led Councillor Derues, who is uh, immediately impacted. Uh, his residents are by this uh, change in policy at the provincial level. Um, so hence trying to find sort of a soft landing spot to, to work within. Uh, but uh, just to give some background on it. So I don't know if Councillor Drews wanted to speak to it first. And then, so go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. This is just to clarify to my colleague. This is, uh, came out because, like, uh, I don't believe uh, I am, we're the only city, we're the only municipality we don't receive funding for that kind of things. And I don't think that taxpayer that they live around the source water to be pay to be punished for the pay for uh, inspection so we're being proactive and then we're going out and making sure that we be able to do this uh, inspection on our own and I do I am recommending and I did uh, spoke to staff that in the next uh, next uh, situation like this we should have some funding from a developer or from DCs or something to put aside so next time we are not in this kind of situation this is one off and I'm trying to help our uh, resident it's, it's if it's in my award or your word or anybody else's word because you can not justify to resident to go in like we need to inspect you need to pay to inspection and if there is some issue with your septic you need to also fix it so uh, uh, being due diligence so that's why the whole motion came out from so Thank you, Councillor Drews. Appreciate that. Um, Councillor Hubley, I know you had a question. Thank you, Chair. Uh, just a question of staff. Do we have any indication from uh, your provincial counterparts as to why Ottawa was not included with the other 14 municipalities for funding for this? I think it has to uh, relate to the size of the municipality, and they figure that the smaller municipalities have fewer resources to be able to uh, pay for such inspections. I, I'm not 100% aware of the rationale, but I believe that's it. We can make an inquiry if you, to that effect. Well, because I think it's only fair to the taxpayers of Ottawa that we try to push back on that if they are paying for other municipalities. And also, if not, if we're not able to get the funding, we should identify this as another provincial download to the municipal taxpayer for a provincial program that we didn't ask for and, and uh, but are going to be left paying the bill for. So I'd like to hear back on that if you have a chance to talk with them and see what's going on. Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. We'll thank you, Councillor Huey. Uh, Councillor Blake. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I guess my question uh, pertains more to the source of funds um, coming from pre-budgeted rural affairs or the rural affairs budget. I guess what are we not going to do now that we're doing this? It certainly will uh, impact our ability to take on future role possibly the um, the funds were used last year for instance for uh, some of the soils mapping that were done through um, through the uh, the Lear program so there is a potential for us to uh, not be able to do certain things that are unforeseen in the future of the year no, but I guess was is this from a, a, a reserve pot in the in the rural affairs office budget or is was is it, are we taking this from a particular program that we're not going to do? No, it's not being taken directly from another program that's planned at this time. All right, thank you very much. So I'll uh, make sure that, um, that I'll work with uh, Mr. Brown on the correspondence to, uh, to to find out more information. We can always do that through the, uh, through the CA as well. Um, 
to find out exactly the specifics behind why some of these policies are funded and others don't. Um, and then in terms of the funding, I know that it is from a, sort of a professional services pot. So it's, it's kind of, it's not exactly the unforeseen circumstances budget, but it's uh, similar in nature to it. Um, is there any further questions on, on the item? So on the item, is it carried? Carried. Thank you very much. So that's it for the uh, agenda. Um, oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so we have a couple of other uh, motions that were added. Uh, first off, I know we have um, uh, both motions need to be uh, had the, the rules waived to consider. Uh, one is from me and one is from uh, Councillor Blay. So on um, waiver of the rules for Councillor Blay's item. Okay. okay. Thanks, and Mr. Uh, Councillor Blay, can you introduce your item? Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Uh, the item relates to the intersection of Colonial uh, Road and Sarsfield Road in the village of Sarsfield. This intersection is at the heart of Sarsfield. Uh, it's currently a high-speed uh, road with heavy um, truck traffic for quarries that are heading into Navin and uh, ultimately to Orleans. Similar in intersection at the uh, heart of Navin is uh, all-way control of stop signs, and this uh, motion would uh, simply direct staff to control the intersection uh, all way with uh, stop signs and my office will be taking other measures through the uh, transportation uh, funding envelope that was approved or that will be approved uh, hopefully by strategic initiatives to also encourage uh, uh, people to slow down and obviously to uh, to stop for pedestrians it's really to f facilitate pedestrian access and walkability of, of the village all right thank you uh, councillor blake um, are there any questions on the item specifically Seeing none, uh, on the other? Okay. okay, thank you. And for the next item, which is one that I'll be bringing forward, I have to just uh, abdicate the chair to my vice chair, Councillor DeRuz, for a moment. Can you go ahead, please, introduce your motion? Oh, good, so I can introduce my motion. That's great, thanks. So this is, um, oh, oh can, can you ask it if we waive the rules? Can we waive the rules? Carried. I mean, I, I feel that we can carry it, so. Okay, so right. go ahead, good. introduce thanks. your motion. So, this is uh, to deal with the, um, the private's uh, permanent signs on private property bylaw. Um, the Richmond Area Coastal Society is looking to put in a, a new ground sign with electronic message center. And essentially it's permitted in, in most instances in the, similar to, to, uh, to Richmond Area Coastal Society's property, but not in this specific instance. So essentially we're just looking, uh, it's, the resolution is therefore we resolve the council approve a waiver of sections 96 and 104 of subsection 1 of the permanent signs bylaw on private property. Bella, um, to permit the electronic message center as part of the ground sign at 6107 Perth Street, subject to a list of conditions which were listed on, I think were circulated. So that's, that's really it. It's just they're, they're, they're actually working with uh, the Royal Affairs Office on a grant to install this sign, and um, they want to add in the, the electronic message center, which wasn't necessarily permitted, so we're just looking for a waiver for that. Thank you. Scott, any question on the motion? Seeing none. You have a question? No. Seeing none, can we have a vote on it? Carried? Carried. Thank you. You. Back to you, Scott. Thanks so much. All right, so in camera items, there are none. Uh, open mic session. So this is an opportunity, Mr. Manning, for you to come down and speak at the open mic session. Thank you very much. Yeah, have a seat yeah, for sure. And just press the button once on the, the mic in front of you. If it, that one, is that one working? Just grab the next one over. And it, the rule is the same as though you're speaking to, uh, to an item on, uh, on the agenda. So it's uh, five minutes. Go ahead. Thank you. My name is Rob Manning. Um, I live at 509 Boundary Road. Um, so the, um, my principal concern is um, uh, with, re with respect to the trickle system, with respect to Ottawa water in the first place. Um, uh, I understand that uh, the Ottawa, uh, city of Ottawa fluoridates their water. Um, if this was uh, sodium fluoride that was added, I would probably not have many issues. 
Um, but the problem is, is that uh, the source, as I understand, is uh, from Tampa Bay, Florida. I understand that the city of Ottawa spends $377,000 a year to buy a product from Tampa Bay, Florida, where they, um, they refine uranium, uh, fluoride, and um, fertilizer. Um, I understand that in this process, um, fluoride is used to extract these constituents from the rock. And I also understand that um, um, there's things called wet scrubbers to keep them from going at the smokestack. In other words, not allowed to be released into the sky. Uh, I understand that um, um, the actual constituent that the city of Ottawa buys as fluoride is actually a mix of caustic substances that um, is quite corrosive. Um, as I understand um, from reliable sources, uh, from the uh, that this uh, caustic nature of this added substance, which is not tested, which is not allowed to go in the sky, is added to our pristine water supply, which I think is wonderful. Um, the problem is, is that it doubles the lead content in white folks, four, uh, four times the blood level in Hispanics, and six times in uh, blacks. My mother is black. I have evidence uh, that she is contaminated with mercury, aluminum, chromium, um, uranium, and uh, I say aluminum. Um, I think I said the one. There's five main ones. Uh, so this is John Scott to the New York in her um, scholastic building at Dr. Roger Masters. Then the University has noted that in areas of radiation, not allowed in Europe, only about 2% of Europe, about 2% of Quebec, and about 2% of British Columbia. About 85 cities have stopped across Canada now. And amongst them, Calgary, which is a city in Canada, brings a lot of people who can know. And um, so the principal concern I have is that uh, the, the caustic water substance added to uh, our water system will do as Dr. Uh, Roger Masters states of Dallas University, and that's to um, increase crime rate and, and decrease IQ, uh, specifically amongst, amongst my neighbors. So I have um, specific urine samples from my, my lab. The good news is that, uh, excuse me, I'm just going to try. The good news is that um, with our collation therapy, I mean, we have a number of levels that come from very high levels, um, carcinogenic, non-toxic levels, to high normal. And uh, so I just like to submit those to the, the chair. Basically, I'd like to keep them out of here. Thank you.
just to, you're just that's right. to we're fine. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So your time is up. So uh, I'm, happy to, I'm happy to take uh, what you brought here, Thanks. and I'll make sure I appreciate you guys listening. And um, I can say that I'm always going to face like that. That's really important for me in consideration to council. I was always back to electrical feats and smoking good to stay easily and uh, to give me a lot of stuff for a nation. Thanks very much, Mr. Chair. Thanks. So I'm going to actually bring this to uh, the attention of our, our public uh, officer, medical health. Uh, uh, Dr. Levy, and, and so he can he can respond maybe directly to you. Um, yeah, it's been done. Oh, okay. Thanks. Thanks. So we have no other registered speakers for the open mic session. Um, Notice is a motion for consideration of subsequent meeting. I've received none, so seeing none, we'll move on. Uh, inquiries, I know uh, Councillor Drews has an inquiry. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My inquiry, it's for staff. Uh, uh, what is the status of the uh, sub Stanley subdivision D07-16-14-0030? and when we can expect to see an application coming to Iraq. So is that something you can answer right now? Yeah. The, uh, the application is uh, currently pending based on uh, the review of the hydrogeology and the, uh, the lot size. So it's currently with staff right now, but we, will be, we are prepared to bring forward a, a report to Iraq at the next meeting on the 3rd of September. Thank you. And uh, just one question, uh, br uh, Mr. Brown. Uh, where we are with the deadline for the 180 days for the answer back to the sub uh, application? Uh, that's passed. The deadline has passed due to the um, discussion with respect to the hydrogeology. Thank you, Chair. Because this is, uh, I think we should make sure that we bring it for next meeting. Yes. Yeah, so can we give um, just to ensure that it is in fact at the September meeting of ERA? Can we just give direction? This committee give direction to staff to ensure that that report is. Uh, for certain brought forward uh, to that committee yes mr chair we're prepared to bring a report for sure at that committee. thank you just uh, just to advise the um, committee coordinators to include that in the minutes of this meeting to um to put on the record that direction was given um to ensure that, that application is on the uh, the agenda for i believe what is the september 3rd uh, meeting of ARAC. All, right. all right thank you very much thank you councillor Drews. Uh, any other inquiries Seeing none. Uh, other business? None. On adjournments? Carried. Our next meeting is uh, Thursday, September 3rd, 2015. I will uh, let you know that um, Public Works is looking to change the audio system in this building, so in this room. Um, so we hopefully won't have these issues uh, going forward with the uh, passing on of the mics. All right. Thanks, everyone. And enjoy uh, your next two months. <laughs>